everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have some leftover dyes here today. Uh, I started with a little bit of six Dharma acid dyes. We have Cabernet, Saffron Spice, Golden Poppy, Forest Green, Dark Navy, and Deep Purple. I did not measure out the amount of dye that I had. I just took a front of a spoon of dye powder, dissolved it in some water, and used that to hand paint uh, a project that I had. But now I have all of this leftover dye, and so I thought it would be fun to dye some more yarn. And I have a feeling we're going to end up with a more muted rainbow type feel, because I think I want to do some immersion dyeing with these colors, and I know there's not that much pigment left. I haven't decided on the yarn or anything we're going to use today, but the first thing I want to do is just add some more water into each of these cups. Now the one color that is probably going to give us the least impact is going to be the golden poppy, just because I don't think I used that much of it. But I don't think we're going to end up with something pastel because all these colors are very saturated and you need so little dye to get a pastel from navy. But depending on how much yarn I use, I don't really know what we're going to end up with. Uh, and I'm excited to see. So uh, I need to go get some yarn and pre-soak it. But these are the colors we're going to start with. This basin here um, is about half full of water and I originally added four tablespoons of white vinegar to it, I believe. Uh, and I figured we may as well use this as our dye bath today. Sometimes I will measure the volumes really precisely, uh, so that way it makes it easier for all of you at home watching to replicate my results. But there are other times where, you know what? It doesn't need to be that precise because it really doesn't. And I think it's worth also showing when I go more by feel. We will be adding liquid dyes in here. So I don't want the volume to be that high. And I also have not pre-soaked this yarn very long. I thought I would pre-soak it for a bit, but instead I am just now after putting it in, removing it. Now clearly we need more water than this. So I'm bringing over the pre-soak. Let's see how we feel about this. Uh, I will likely want to add more acid at some point as well. And so the other thing to keep in mind is that the more water we have in here, uh, the more water we have, the more the colors will spread, which can be a very good thing depending on what we're going for. So the more water, the more spread we get, the less water, the less spread. But also we'll be adding more and more liquid with our dyes as we go. And I think we're only gonna try to dye one side. So maybe we will let things spread to see what we get and add a little bit more. Oh gosh, I'm totally gonna regret this, aren't I? Because we've got a lot of volume over there, but you know what? We're gonna go for it. <laughs> Because I just looked back at the dyes and realized, oh my goodness, I added more water to each of them. We have about a cup uh, in each. So, you know what, we'll go for it, but I'm gonna start heating things up until we get nice and steamy. We are nice and hot. And normally when I dye a rainbow, I, am an I, I end up feeling inclined to um, start with the yellow and then do the other colors. But today I'm feeling like going about this a little bit differently. And here I am starting with our uh, purple. This is our deep purple. You can see how it goes very quickly from brown to very purple. I'm pouring it on, not touching, because I'm gonna let the colors do what they're gonna do as I come in with the Cabernet and do the same kind of thing. The colors are gonna spread without my help, uh, but we can see what these do before we bring in our blue and our orange to sort of work our way in. 
And by maybe giving this yarn a little bit of time for the colors to like spread like before adding the next color, uh, maybe we'll get some really cool effects there. So let's go ahead and wait five minutes and then we'll add the next color. All right, it's been five minutes. We're gonna do, let's do the orange next. Now I'm a little nervous about this because this orange had more pigment than any other color and I'm going through a huge amount of effort to not stir. And it's very possible that I didn't do that far enough away from the other colors. So maybe we'll do the navy uh, a little more in the middle. Oh, I really want to touch. I know I said I wasn't going to touch, but I really want to touch. Should I touch? Oh, because we've got some white there. You guys, this is so hard. I'm going to touch. I can't not. I make the rules, I can touch. Although, it's funny because a lot of the color has struck already. If I look at it, there's not that much pigment left. Okay, I don't mind there being some lightness, okay? But, there's no harm, this is good, that the colors appear to be striking. It's okay for it to be a little less white. We might have more white on the bottom, but it's nice to see that those touches did not have a massive impact. Now, one thing I would like to do, because we're adding a lot more volume, so I'm taking about half of a tablespoon of vinegar, adding it onto the purple, and another about half of one, adding it onto the Cabernet. I'm not, this could work itself through, I'm not trying or holding back, I just felt like I should add a little acid before we do the next colors. And there's way less pigment there in that orange than I thought. But, okay, five minutes, and then, gosh, I guess we'll do just the green because those two are gonna touch. So I'll see you in five minutes. There are three minutes left on my timer, but I need to pop in and say, I do not yet know editing Rebecca if this is a Leave No Die Behind or a Die Pot Weekly video. <laughs> Honestly, it depends. And sometimes I have these videos that could fit either way that I hold on to in case I have a spot in my schedule where I need a video to go. Uh, yes, this is leftover dyes, but I'm doing a very fun project, and so I don't know. I don't know which category I will put it in yet. Wah -ha -ha. <laughs> oh my god, I tried a fake laugh, and it was so cringy. <laughs> and so now you have a real one. But anyway, two minutes, 20 seconds left. The thing with this approach that I'm using right now is that by waiting in between the colors, um, we are layering the colors. Instead, here's our green. Um, we are layering the colors instead of just, who's he, what's it? I have words. <laughs> we are layering the colors instead of just mixing them. If I added them all one at a time, yes, we probably would have had some more, oh, I'm blending this one out a little more because there's a lot of space for that not so much color. Um, if we added things one at a time with no acid and let things blend more, then we would have a different kind of feel where the colors sort of mix together versus the kind of feel we get when we have a layered tonal colorway. Uh, and so both are definitely fun, just different. So. Uh, I guess five minutes and then I'll come in with that yellow. And I know I touched it. I have a no touch emoji that is available uh, if you join to become a channel member. It starts at, I think, 99 cents a month. Uh, and then you can use all the custom emotes that I have. But I made the emotes mostly because I like them and I wanted them. Um, <laughs> but you also get a badge next to your name. So. Uh, you can click on the join button and you'll get more information about it. But uh, anyway, the biggest thing you can do to help support the content here is by subscribing, turning on notifications, uh, you know, engaging with the videos, pressing the like button, leaving a comment below, things like that. But I had a feeling that if this was a live stream, I would be getting a lot of those don't touch emotes in the chat. And that is what is mentally going through my brain right now. 
<laughs> I'll see you in about four minutes now. Okay, our yellow, which is more of an orange anyway. But actually, it's working really nicely right there. It covered that area really well. Okay, I can poke that little bit down. All right. Hey, maybe the secret all along is to do the yellow last. <laughs> Instead of the yellow first. All right. And we're definitely overexposed now. All right, now we don't know how much white we have going on beneath. Certainly the act of pouring will add some color down there, but we could have a bunch of pastels on the other side. It's hard to know. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait five minutes and then we'll add more acid. That sounds like a plan. Okay, let's add some more acid. One, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar should be pretty good. Uh, and I have some more of that original pre-soak as well. And that has some acid in it. Adding some more liquid won't hurt. Well, it could cause things to spread more. But that is one reason why I'm adding more liquid is because you know how I just touched it a few places up at the top? Maybe that'll help at the bottom. Now, I can see maybe a tiny hint of pink over there. I think most of the color is in our yarn, but I am going to heat it for another 25 minutes, and then we'll come check in. It has now been over 30 minutes since I last added dye, and I'm gonna turn off the heat. There may still be some color in our dye bath, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, because we're gonna remove the yarn. And the reason why I'm not gonna worry about any residual color in the dye bath is that some colors can be known bleeders. But what I'm curious, <gasps> ooh, oh, with the exception of the yellow, we've got some white there. The colors went through really, really well. Oh, that's awesome. The force from like pouring the liquid in just forces it all the way through. I'm just so happy with how this turned out. I'm gonna set this aside to cool before we wash it. And there is very little pigment left here in the dye bath. Not zero. Um, I see some little like globby guys. And actually it looks like maybe there's some staining over there from some of the orange, but hopefully all the color is in our yarn. It looks awesome, amazing. I am beyond thrilled <laughs> with how this turned out. So I'll see you in a little bit when we're ready to wash it. Let's wash our beautiful rainbowy yarn. I already added stuff. I already added some dish soap to our wash bath. Okay, this yarn is so pretty. I know the yellow is barely a yellow, but I don't care. <laughs> Now I see a hint of some yellow in the water, but it's barely there, so I'm not that worried. Let's see if we can remain not that worried as I refill this up. All right, now I will also add that my basin was stained a little bit yellow earlier, so I believe what I saw before was real, but that also could account for some color, but hey, it's clear, right? Yeah. Do you see any color? No. Awesome, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this glorious yarn, put it through the spin dryer, and we're out of focus. Hang it up to dry so we can have some conclusions. This came out so beautiful. I am thrilled. And look at all of our, I mean, I know it's more of a mustardy, golden orange color, but look at all that yellow that we have. Oh, now I could have spread out maybe the Cabernet a bit more so then maybe our royal purple down there didn't need quite as much real estate, but this turned out stunning. I really love that the little bits of white and more pastel areas that we have in here give it almost a vintage feel. Now, this is a color white because there is so much contrast in how deep some of the colors are versus how pastel some are. This would not hold up well with a complex stitch pattern like cables or something because the color changes would draw your eye more than the stitch pattern. 
but this is a type of colorway that would shine in a more simple textured stitch pattern and I think would be a lot of fun to work with. I would love to do this again with the same general color palette, but maybe picking, and I'm blanking on the orange or the yellow that I used at the time, maybe I used Golden Poppy, maybe I should use Honey Mustard instead. So that's a hair more yellow to differentiate from our Saffron Spice, but it still worked great. I adore when I'm doing a dyeing project and I have my day planned out such that I have an idea of what I want to create but then I have ideas of what I'm going to do if I mix up more dye than I want for that one given project. And this is one of those examples. I needed these deep colors for a resist dyeing project where I knew I wasn't going to use all of them. And so when I was starting out I was thinking gee, what else could I maybe do with these colors that would be a lot of fun? And yes, I made things up as I went along, but I had hoped to have leftovers, so that way I could create something like this. And I think that I could potentially do this type of colorway again on purpose. I hope. <laughs> it depends on how good the notes editing Rebecca takes and how much, you know, the dye bath, how much of that was left over versus I knew what it started with, yada, yada, yada. I hope that you get my point. And this is something that I do try to do, especially when I want to work with liquid dyes and I'm not going to use all of it. Uh, I have a set of two other projects that will likely come out after this one, but you never know, uh, where I mix up dyes with acid knowing I was going to do two extremely different techniques, but I could use the dye for both because that way I wasn't going to have a lot of extra that would be a leave no dye behind. Necessarily, I had a very specific project in mind. And so this is another perk of sometimes having dye socks that you've mixed on hand because then you already have liquid dyes you can go to and play with. However, these days, I try to only keep big stocks of, say, primary colors, maybe black or navy, colors that I reach for a lot, uh, because that gives me more flexibility. There are times when, say, Cabernet, if I have a Cabernet dye stock, I might then be using Cabernet in a lot of videos because I'm trying to use what I have on hand. And so sometimes having just little bits of color mixed up at unspecified concentrations is a helpful way to go. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post at least twice a week uh, for long form content and then we have a lot of fun shorts along the way which I'm having a lot of fun creating because both that's where eyeballs tend to go these days and it's a great way for people to find my content but also Sometimes I have something that I think is a really good point that then I can add to my FAQs playlist uh, to sort of make it easier to find some of those observations and conclusions. And so, <laughs> who knows what I'll have to say for this one. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.